Immunosuppressants. These drugs do exactly what their name suggests. They suppress the immune system. You probably know that our immune system is what keeps our bodies healthy by fighting off infection. So why would we have drugs that suppress or weaken it? Well, I'm glad you asked. In this video, we'll go over all the immunosuppressant drugs and how they work in the form of a visual mnemonic so you'll remember everything for test day. Welcome to Pixarize's biggest motorcycle racing competition where our champion has just won the race. Things got pretty hairy in this race though, just take a look at that motorcycle's broken windshield. Here at Pixarize, we use a shield, or in this case a windshield, to represent the immune system. Because like a shield, the immune system works to protect the body by defending it against infections and the like. But in this case, the windshield is broken because we are talking about medications that weaken or suppress the immune system, fittingly called immunosuppressants. Let's move on to learn some of the key drug names of the immunosuppressants that you should be familiar with. You may not think of motorcycle racing as your typical sport, but trust me, to the motorcyclists, this is the best sport around. The name of this race is the Cycle Sport, and only the top cyclist athletes were invited to attend. By the way, the word Cycle Sport sounds a lot like the name of our first immunosuppressant, Cyclosporine. Get it? Cycle Sport for Cyclosporine? Okay, okay, let's keep moving. Looks like the windshield broke because it was hit straight on by a very sharp tack, shattering the windshield. Use this tack to help you remember the drug name tacrolimus, because tacrolimus literally starts with tack, right? It's customary at events like this to hear a quick interview with the winner of the race. Just lean into that microphone there. But you bet that this microphone actually has a deeper meaning. In fact, the microphone is also our symbol for the drug mycophenolate. Get it? A microphone for mycophenolate? Now that we know the names of the most important immunosuppressant drugs, let's move on to learn about when they are actually used in the clinical setting. The winner of the cycle sport competition is putting his time in front of the microphone towards a good cause. Notice how he's holding up his driver's license to show how he is an organ donor. That's right, he's using his stage time to encourage others to be organ donors, which reminds me, the immunosuppressants we just learned are often prescribed to people who have recently had an organ transplant in order to prevent organ transplant rejection. You see, the immune system is designed to attack any foreign objects that enter the body, viruses, bacteria, and new organs from other people. To stop our immune systems from rejecting a transplanted organ, we can give an immunosuppressant drug that works to weaken the immune system and prevent it from attacking the new organ. In short, just remember that immunosuppressants are used to prevent organ transplant rejections. The winner's competitor is not looking too happy. In the race, the other man was actually ahead the whole time. That is, until his motorcycle overheated and caught on fire. Luckily, a fire extinguisher was on hand to put out the flames. By the way, at Pixarize, we use a fire extinguisher to symbolize anti-inflammatory drugs. Because a fire extinguisher puts out flames, just like anti-inflammatory drugs put out inflammation. Get it? Immunosuppressants can be used to reduce inflammation, treating several types of autoimmune diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis and psoriasis. However, this is a pretty rare use case for these drugs because immunosuppressants have quite a few side effects. Speaking of side effects, let's cover a few of these next. One of the first side effects we should mention is a direct result of the immunosuppression we spoke about earlier, since suppressing the immune system comes with a greatly increased risk for infection. Let's cover a few of the less obvious side effects, shall we? Like you would expect at the finish line of a big race, there is a table full of snacks and drinks for the participants. Unfortunately, they are out of grapefruit juice as evidenced by this sign here. You know, that actually brings up an important nursing consideration for immunosuppressants. People taking immunosuppressants should avoid grapefruit juice. That's because grapefruit juice can alter the metabolism of drugs in the body to put the patient at risk for drug toxicity. So just like these guys at the cycle sport event won't be drinking grapefruit juice, remind your patients also to avoid drinking grapefruit juice while taking immunosuppressant drugs. The winner of the cyclosport race here is acting as if his success is no big deal. Just take a look at how he's casually blowing a big bubble with his bubble gum. This bubble gum is here to symbolize, well, expanding gums. Cyclosporine can cause what we call gingival hyperplasia, which is essentially an overgrowth of the gum tissue in the mouth. Big bubble gum for gum overgrowth. Got it? Let's move on. You know how guys in biker gangs often have those big biker beards? Well, this guy is no different. His beard is huge. Our biker friend's big beard can remind you that cyclosporine can cause the side effect of increased hair growth. The medical term for this is hirsutism. Hirsutism is usually not a problem for male patients, but female patients may have trouble with facial hair growth. All right, just two more side effects before we wrap up. 
Going back to our sore loser, he decided to crack open a drink and remember, it's not a grapefruit one, but the soda must have been recently shaken because it sprang up straight into his face. Poor guy seems to be having a rough day. The soda is coming out of the bottle with a lot of pressure, don't you think? This high pressure blast can remind you that these drugs can also increase the pressure, blood pressure that is. Cyclosporin is known to cause hypertension, so that's something to monitor for and report to the physician. In his surprise from the soda spray, the man bumped into the table, sending a bowl of jelly beans falling to the floor. By now, you probably already know that we use kidney beans as our recurring symbol for the kidney. So these falling kidney beans represent falling kidney function or kidney toxicity. Cyclosporine and tachromolus are both notable for their ability to cause severe kidney damage. Keep an eye on those kidney function labs like BUN, creatine, as well as the amount of urine output for patients taking these drugs. All right, that's all for this mnemonic on the immunosuppressants. Let's recap. The immunosuppressants are drugs that include cyclosporine, tachromolus, and mycophenolate. These drugs work by suppressing or weakening the immune system and are used in the clinical setting to prevent organ transplant rejection. In rare cases, these drugs may also be used as anti-inflammatory agents to treat autoimmune diseases. Patients taking immunosuppressants should avoid grapefruit juice since grapefruit juice can increase the risk of drug toxicity. As with all immunosuppressants, one major side effect to keep in mind is an increased risk for infection. Other side effects of cyclosporine include gingival hyperplasia or overgrowth of the gums of the mouth, hirsutism referring to increased hair growth, hypertension, and kidney failure. And now we're all done with immunosuppressants. Who knew that grapefruit juice could be such a dangerous thing? See you next time. Thanks for watching. For more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel and check out our newest lessons. For more resources on this topic, including fact lists and interactive review images, click the image next to the More Here arrow. I'll see you next time.